Hi, Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com here at DevOps Enterprise Summit. And we're here with Arthur von Schendel. That's right. And Charlotta of Schubert. Phyllis. Phyllis. There you go. I almost got like, through it all. And you guys have a really interesting story that you've told here at DevOps Enterprise Summit London. And and that is this idea of you you your company outsourced IT. That's right. But it's not just your normal outsourcing model, right? You no. do outsourcing without managers. Almost a no ops model, if we can call it that. Arthur Charlotta, tell our audience a little bit about it, because they're not going to believe you. All right. Well, let's first start with the complete thing that you will never believe, and that's uh, we outsource IT, um, and we just have one service level agreement we offer our customers, uh, and that is 100%. So we guarantee full 100% availability of all applications. Really? Uh, we do DevOps, we do uh, uh, one second releases, uh, and we remain 100% available. And we're not talking five nines, right? Some people say no. five nine. We're talking true 100%. That's right. That's, that's phenomenal. How long have you been offered this? Since 2001. So uh, we started off by automating everything we could. Um, uh, automation drives uh, lazy people ex uh, especially. Mm -hmm. And we were hiring very clever people. They tend to be lazy and they tend to automate. So Fantastic. we were doing uh, DevOps before uh, DevOps became a DevOps uh, before they called it DevOps. Yeah, I guess, yeah. And Charlotte, tell us what the, what's with the no managers in all of this? Well, from day one, we were wondering why would you need managers? Because if people can buy houses, have to decide to want to go for children or all kinds of decisions they take in their life without a manager. So why, if you work together, would there be a need for managers? It doesn't mean there's no work being done because you will you, you do want people to have appraisal talks. So there are roles or tasks to be done, but it's not necessarily that you have to be appointed. Right. Not to be bought. So I this is a very similar you know, in my I own my own company. I've and I've managed companies now for years. Yeah. I always feel that if I hire adults I shouldn't have to manage, babysit them, manage them to that extent, right? If they understand what their job, and we all understand what our job and role is, you know, do you... So it's basic human need, no? You want to be, you want to deal with other adults and you want to be treated as like that. an adult, right? So and keep how it simple. Way, <laughs> again, how, is it, how long have you kind of... Oh, from day one. So From moment, day one. Yes. We say experts in the lead. So if these experts, these clever boys and girls who are at our company and they work together with the customer, they can decide what the promise is and they can decide what time there is. So they, they promise 100% in a certain time and they deliver. Because if you promise something, it's something else than that their salesperson comes to you and says, hey, you have to, to make it happen. Now you and your team together with the customer, you make a promise. Right. That's, that's intrinsically so that, different. So the no manager piece of it then is intrinsic exactly. to the 100% SLA. That's absolutely. To the they're, promise. They're, and they all tie together through uh, a thing called responsibility, right? Right. So people take responsibility for their own actions. But a great team, if we're a great team, I'll take responsibility for your actions. Even though I can't because control you. Because it's the team. Because that's the team, yeah. So the, the fundamental thing that's very, very important to get really right is to get your team dynamics working uh, uh, at the highest level possible. This is, I, I personally find this fascinating. When, give me an idea. What is your normal engagement? Who, who is your customer for your normal engagements? Are these large enterprises, horses, as we say here, or yeah. smaller or bigger? Well, typically, because we hired the, the clever people, right? Um, uh, they wanted to get, uh, they always wanted a challenge. Clever people need a challenge. So the, the, so the jobs we took on, we thought should be the most complicated jobs we could find. So that's what we call mission critical outsourcing. So if the business, a specific, specific uh, business functionality is critical to your business, 
Uh, and today that means uh, uh, if it needs to be changed uh, 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 as much as possible and still re remain available, so these two things make it mission critical, then it's for us. So we just uh, segment that bit. We don't care about the rest, uh, but we do that. And our customers are uh, basically banks, online retailers, uh, energy companies. Um, that's our bank. That's our customer. Bread and butter, as yeah. they say. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And Charlotte... Talk to me, how do you, so I'm a big banker, an energy company, I want to engage, in, yeah, no SLA, no manager, do you have to convince them of this or they, they love the idea? Well, often we get, we hear that it's too good to be true, so right. that's part it, of our, it must not be. It's, it's part of our story, uh, but I guess it's, if you connect with people, they, I cannot say you have to trust me, I can only give you examples or other people tell you stories, other customers, and you maybe feel it and you understand what we're trying to say, but it's up to you if you want to trust it. And we often start with, let's not trust each other when we start, that's because the that's, that's the basic start for human beings. And from there on, we're going to work and we think it will work out because we've done this before and we really like to do it. We love to do it. Fantastic. Um, you're obviously here in the London area. Where, where, where else do you do you work out of? We work out of the Benelux. Benelux. Yeah, we are uh, based at uh, Schiphol Rijk. That's the airport near Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I must say, most of our customers are uh, uh, Dutch international companies. Okay. Um, uh, one of the things we do believe very strongly in is the proximity of the team. So one of uh, the base, one of the basics of our success is the team, uh, as we just explained, right? Uh, and, but we also think that the team includes the customer. So um, uh, the cus being being very near to the customer, the proximity is important sure. for the success. Yeah. Ge uh, geographic pr proximity. Geographic proximity. Yeah. And that, do you feel that limits you in being able to expand then? Well, let's put it this way, it, it, it wouldn't stop us from, from opening an office abroad. Uh, but uh, the same thing, uh, uh, the context is extremely important. Uh, no. So if we would office, open an office anywhere else, uh, it would be a local office with local people uh, doing local business. Okay, let me just pivot a little bit to another topic, and that is the DevOps Enterprise Summit. There you go. Where we're here today. What, what kind of drove you guys to come present and, and be part of this? Uh, well, my, uh, our colleague Peter Sipo was in San Francisco um, ah. to talk about uh, his or their project with the Dutch Harbor pilots. Uh, and then they, they kept in contact and they said, well, our latest project is Choose Your Own Boss. Would you be interested? So that's why we are here. I got it. They Got keep it. asking us. <laughs> they keep everybody yeah, gets so it's not that's not bad. And uh, what what's been your impression so far today? It's really cool. <laughs> yeah. En enjoying interacting with the different people. It's amazing to me. Um uh, Schubert Phyllis together with a couple of people. Uh, uh we started doing DevOps in Amsterdam uh, a few years ago. Um uh, and this was all geeks, yeah. This was the bottom up. Uh, a grassroot revolution, uh, 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 engineers taking control. Um, yeah. uh, and this, so in my mind, this still was the case, right? So that my last uh, DevOps session was like three or four years ago. They didn't have Disney. They didn't have <laughs> <laughs> Disney slides and on that Barclays crowd, Bank. Huh? No, Barclays but and, the, yeah. it's amazing to see how the enterprise adapts. To and, has, has and absorb on it. This, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. really have. And look, to your point earlier, if it didn't work, people wouldn't do it. Exactly. So in that I sense, agree. It's, it's a kind of no-brainer as well. It, it, it's happening and it will keep on growing. Sure, sure. All right, well, we've probably taken too much of your time already, but I appreciate you taking your time out of this great schedule today to spend a little time with our listeners and, and us and uh, continued success. We'd love to hear more about this because this is a very different approach than we normally see, right? Even in DevOps. So Charlotta, Arthur, thank you for being our guest. This is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com. <laughs>